Good hello. Thanks for watching another Sunday case study. I'm looking at Julian Assange this week. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at these three images here. And I'm going to be paying particular attention to what we can see in his hands pertaining to uh, how um, potentially honest this person is, uh, what the kind of character, what, what we're seeing in his in his palms, what sort of a person he is. And also, I want to look at what's in store in uh, terms of his future. How long has he got left? Can we see this? And in what way is this displayed in the palms? So first of all, this is probably the clearest picture I have of Julian Assange. That's not a picture, that's just lots of water. I don't know about you, but the first thing that I notice here, the thing that really stands out for me, um, other than the fact we have an exceptionally long mercury finger, and it's not crooked by any means, it kind of veers away from the rest of the fingers, which shows us um, you know, a need for freedom of action. There is a sense of courage here. There's also uh, a possible uh, feeling of abandonment issues, potentially uh, it's a sign of um, uh, emotional sort of abandonment uh, and i think that's i strongly feel that's uh, linked towards his father and i see uh, a great distance between uh, jupiter and saturn at the base of the fingers here not necessarily in this image where can we just here look at that it's clear uh, that's a clear sign there of someone who has been in some way uh, neglected or abandoned by their father either emotionally or you know, perhaps he just wasn't around much, perhaps he had to work, I don't know exactly, but that that's what that need is there for, and that, that kind of courage and that freedom of independence, that freedom of action, that need for uh, freedom of uh, spatial kind of, um, that freedom of space comes from, it's linked to that, um, you know, that, that compensating from uh, that neglect from that father all in childhood, if, if that kind of makes sense. I hope so. But the thing that really stands out for me is this. It's the wasting here of the, in particular, the Jupiter finger. We've got a little bit with Saturn as well. Uh, and really, I'm just going to, I'm just going to call it out that this is uh, um, the second phalanx of Jupiter is at its thinnest where it meets the first here. And, and this is a, a sign of someone who is out for glory, out for fame. They are an opportunist in terms of what they can achieve by um, getting the name out there. This is someone who is certainly, you know, desires to make money, to make material gain and to gain glory through any opportunity they can find. And I hadn't actually expected to see this in his hands. I was ex actually expecting to see uh, something a bit more noble than this. Other areas that we can uh, look for um, dishonesty or, or, or the kind of integrity of character is certainly the heart line. Now, what I would what I would like to see here in someone who I would think is sort of noble and upright and honourable, uh, someone with a clear conscience, is a heart line that clearly and deeply, without obstruction and uh, without sort of a derailing um with you know without any kind of pitting or um you know fragmentation islands darkening without any kind of defects or seen in the lines at all a heart line that reaches up towards the middle of jupiter and saturn that shows the the self and uh, duty and honor and, and that contribution towards everyone else so it shows an equal balance of both that's where i would expect to see the average heart line and it rises in a neat curve a neat arc upwards like this that, that curvature shows that capacity for consideration kindness caring empathy sympathy it shows a capacity to love essentially and not just emotionally, but physically as well, that can show. So it's it's not specifically, um, explicitly the ability to love emotionally. It's also that physical desire as well. Um, so, you know, it's not the be all and end all. Um, the depth and uh, shows that power of feeling that, that, you know, 
as well, the depth of that heart line. And we certainly see some of that here, but what we do see here, and this is a little bit disconcerting actually, is that the heart line is quite wavy. And as it kind of does, as there's a little bump in the road here, this is the left hand, so this is what's internal. This is emotional damage. And again, I think this is likely um, linked towards childhood. And we can see this kind of a kink in the emotional makeup here. Um, maybe that's not the right word to use, but there's some damage here. There's a there's a, a scar, uh, scar tissue here to the emotional makeup. And it's nice that it forks. That's really important. That shows, you know, kind of a multifaceted uh, emotional framework. That's good. And it does start to, it tries to reach up in between Saturn and Jupiter. And I think it does. It's not incredibly clear to see here but i feel like it should go a bit further and i feel that because we've got a bit of a kink here as well it's not it's not great um we're seeing the left hand now the right hand shows us and i can appreciate it's not the clearest of images that's a much better outlook that's much better we can see the heart line here rising up towards uh, saturn and jupiter and so i think what we're getting here is a picture of um you know, internally, this this is a, essentially a damaged man. We've had someone who's been through a lot. He's been hurt. He's been let down. And uh, he's been neglected, um, abandoned in some way. I think there's certainly that there. Now, considering all of that, he's come out of the other side of it very well, I would say. Um, the heart line itself isn't all that low-lying. It's re I mean, it's, we can't judge this all too, you know, conclusively we can't you know uh, conclude 100 percent here but just because of the angle of that hand but we can certainly see there's a clear arc here we can see that it does begin to rise up in between we've got a fork here and that that forking here branches downwards essentially this heart line is crashing down into the heart line this is sheer and utter disappointment at a very early age in early teens i would think probably about 12 again it's very hard to say here and i think this is likely again linked to the father i think it's a strong disappointment here with this person's father and i think this has probably led to uh, closing off emotionally i think that's essentially what's happened here we've got some um there's a there's an essence of this person who would otherwise have been um a lot more um able to you know open up his feelings to in his closest relationships had he had that kind of early bonding experiences which is so necessary for everyone when they grow up these are essential learning um, experiences and as i have already mentioned there is a slight wasting here of the second phalanx of saturn right at the top where meets the first phalanx of that finger and this is showing a sign of exactitude someone who is precise about their uh, facts their details a scientific mind scientific study a love of getting things right it's it's a sign of a bit of a nitpicker essentially there's that there's that element there but it's more around getting the facts right this is not someone who would stumble on his words who chooses words very carefully and that makes a lot of sense with a journalist now moving on to the apollo finger the thing i find no most noteworthy here is the squarish appearance of the tip of apollo notice how we have quite a rounded jupiter rounded mercury saturn is slightly spatulate but square is the apollo's feature here and this um this really shows uh, an essence of searching for the truth in all that is abstract. A person with a very square Apollo finger, a tip, really is on a, a hunt, really, um, for the truth in things, in, in subjects that are otherwise sort of lacking in that sort of subject matter you know that associated with fantasy creativity and imagination um subjects that are not associated with logic it's hard to explain this is someone who is on a quest for truth with anything uh, you know surrounding imagination so essentially he's potentially trying to he's looking in areas where there is 
truth to be found in in subject matter that would otherwise be sort of dismissed as folly. Now, if you've watched many of my other videos, you'll know that these fairly closely wound together Saturn and Apollo shows a consideration for the future and a, and a potential kind of feeling here of being sort of stuck in a rut. Now, the thumb is quite something. The thumb appears somewhat squarish at the tip and it looks relatively balanced as well. There's probably a bit more logic. Yes, there's more logic here than willpower and this really does show someone who is more likely to be bullied than do the bullying. And that's a very vague way of putting it. This is someone who has more ideas than uh, a brash persona that, you know, is using is better with their head than their hands. They are uh, a lover, not a fighter. They are someone who has all the ideas and um, is not as uh, endowed with the ability to action them. However, there, what is really positive here is just how evenly uh, spaced out the width of both the thumb and the logic is here. And that kind of leavens uh, that inability to action. So there's such a vast amount of ideas here that they are very productively and efficiently uh, actioned by the, that kind of squarish tip of that willpower. This isn't someone who will um, back down out of pure sort of logic, um, but out of, out of pure practicality. There's an almost, I think this person appears as though they're bold and, and courageous, whereas actually they're just so um, decisive and practical that they are so matter of fact that they're, it's, it's almost as though that, that courage doesn't really come into it. It's not even about that. So whilst this person might have more logic than will, where this um, the squareness of the thumb makes up, up for this in its uh, realistic, decisive, and uh, sheer strength of, there's, a, there's an extra sort of strength of will there. There's an endurance there. Because that, that kind of reasoning overpowers um, that lack of, will if that makes sense so we don't we don't need that extra length we've got squareness to make up for that wherever we see squareness in palmistry we see that practicality that rationality that the realistic thought and uh, that kind of pragmatism we see practicality overriding um squareness you'd always see it with that kind of truth the duty on a loyalty and and so that that's what this kind of stands for that kind of all those things and so a person with a square thumb you don't see it all that often really um and it's i, I just sort of stalled in my head and then i thought for a second well the thumb appears more square on the right um and that would mean that he's right-handed but uh, that square thumb creates that that reliability about a person their, their character is reliable. What, this person's word um, is something you can rely on. That's what that shows. And so a person who has that kind of trait picks up uh, reliable friends and probably few. I wouldn't have thought that many friends. Now, on that note, although the friends that this person does have, he can certainly rely on as well. I wanted to look at the lifeline and how closely it kind of cuts in towards the Venus Mount. And the reason why I want to do that is because I kind of want to see um, the capacity of how you know close this person's environment is. And the left hand, I mean, that's that's pretty average, really. That's not the best image just because it kind of cuts off at the bottom. And this is not a very clear image, although it's good for the hand shape. And you, the this image isn't all that good either. But this image is pretty good and actually this is this you know what i was expecting to see is a really closed off uh lifeline here reducing the size of the venus mount reducing this person's um social sphere um i'm not sure i'm getting that but again the angle of this image isn't the only one that is reliable it's this one just because of the clarity it's not really all that good so let's just move on i have seen a very square um satin finger on the right hand just here that's looking pretty square 
And you might be able to guess, actually, with some of the things I've already said, that squareness is reliability, it's truth, and it's duty, it's honour. And this is the finger of duty and honour. So it shows a strict conviction of doing the right thing, of following through with uh, essential um, duty. It, it shows a uh, clear uh, lack of ability to be corrupted. And if you look in this image here, you can see, uh, again, you can see this clear spacing here. Um, at the bottom of Jupiter and Saturn, but look at uh, now you can really see the squareness of Apollo there on his left hand. But look at the length of Apollo, and again this coincides with um, that kind of the wasting of the second phalanx of Jupiter on his left hand just here. Look at just how long Apollo is altogether. And, and this again, this is reputation, this is glory. So although this is someone who is certainly on a quest to find the truth in all things that would other by, otherwise be regarded as nonsense, this is someone who won't back down in that quest for truth. They will do everything, you know, they will stop at nothing to reveal truth, uh, to to expose those who are hiding the truth, out of a, a very sort of strict um, but realistic and decisive sense of a code, a moral code of honour and duty. At the same time, this is not a completely selfless act. This is someone who is doing it because they are in a, a, a grand pursuit of reputation and glory. This person is um, quite vain in that way. But, you know, it's not altogether bad because it is intertwined with this high and quite strict moral code at the same time. The Mercury finger is overall, it's pretty straight. There is a slight kink here and we see a little bump here and there's nothing wrong with that. This person certainly desires uh, the um, physical appreciation of the opposite sex. Um, and it, there is a slight curvature here. Uh, Mercury, the tip, is well developed. We've got here certainly someone who's very able to persuade. Um, and actually, what I what I was picking up on earlier about this thumb here, there is in some way a lacking of tact for diplomacy. So it's sort of kind of just a bluntness about his uh, displaying of his findings, which he is so... Um, you know, factually astute with. There's no uh, room for um, balancing or measuring his sentences. It's pure fact, and if you can't handle that, well, that's too bad. The truth is sometimes a bat pill to swallow, and it's going to stick in your throat, and I don't really care. It's not about you. But although the mercury finger is ever so slightly leaning, this this does provide some diplomacy. Um, because it's, you know, that extra ability to kind of see things from another angle. Um, there's that persuasion, that ability to kind of get inside someone's mind a little bit in order to kind of get them to see your point of view. So there is that there. But what really leavens that potential for um, corruption, because that's what it is, when we see the, the little finger bending, that's the potential for corruption. It's only the one sign here I'm really seeing. The length of the Mercury finger leavens that. And because we have an exceptional length here, then, you know, it's it's not really fair to say that this is, uh, you know, any kind of corruption. And anyway, you can never really judge by one sign or symptom alone, which is why I'm going over all of this in the chirogamy. So let's get back to our lovely detail here. Um, now, in other, the other way I would look for the potential uh, of deceit, dishonesty in a part, and I think we can already rule out this person is not dishonourable or deceitful, is the resets, the little bracelets, rings, just below the palm here. Now, you'll see in, I believe Donald Trump has a few of these that are broken, and this is the sign of uh, someone who's 
a bit of a liar really someone who's not going to handle the truth in a way that's factual off topic slightly here the basal phalanx of jupiter is certainly on a chunky side and given that we have here on the right hand this is what's physical material we have a strong curvature of the heart line and this kink that i've mentioned here this uh, appreciation for the physical form altogether we have certainly have someone with a high sex drive not really relevant in this reading but it's just to get a you know a greater sense of the man the lifeline and the headline are intertwined until the age of around about 22 and you know what i mentioned about earlier about this early teens here and how this has affected this person you can really see the damage here uh, which corresponds with this here this kind of emotional scar tissue this is deeply um this is a deep hurt this um but um the 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 lifeline here it begins to carve away it begins to really carve his own independence at about the age of 22 and this this conjoined life and headline is a good sign because it shows caution. It shows someone who is potentially, he was probably very shy as a child. There was a lacking of confidence there. I think he's certainly grown in confidence as he's grown older. We don't see a short Jupiter finger. We don't see it overly long either. It's a good, it's, it's well measured. Um, I think the pursuit of uh, glory and reputation does in some way override his uh, sense of self but it's not altogether a bad thing i mean he's a journalist and obviously you know he wants his name um to be well known he wants to be known for the work he's doing and that is exposing the truth and there's actually in a lot of respects nothing wrong with that um the the headline and the heartline are very spaced apart and this shows an open that person what you see is what you get there's a genuine quality to this person he's open-minded but there's also um quite a warmth here there's that there's that sort of uh a gentle optimism that's the word i'm looking for this this person is he's he's going to give everyone the benefit of the doubt that's that's what this person will do without a doubt this is someone who will give everyone a chance regardless of what is even being said about them behind their backs if it doesn't matter he will this person will judge them by them by their own actions from and what he sees this is not someone who will listen to gossip and hearsay although he will certainly investigate so i'm going to get right to the crux of it now this is what i found most prominent here and this is actually the reason why i wanted to make this video this this bit of information i'm going to reveal here and it's only really visible in this image and i can see here at the bottom of the lifeline we have a doubling of the mercury line this is someone who is uh thinking very carefully about their health they're very scared for their own safety that's what this is showing here we have here uh, an escape line which is linked to this health so there's there's a feeling here about them being displaced and how this might affect their long-term health shall we say now i'm being diplomatic now where this mercury line the doubling of the mercury line here attaches itself to this escape line is on the lifeline it's all kind of merged and mixed in and, and and part of a greater meaning it's all part of one uh, lucid meaning it meets the lifeline at the age of i'm going to say about 65 so possibly 63 something around that age anyway so right now julian assange is 52 and so what we can expect to see is i mean it's, it's a bit of a difficult one because this is left hand this is how he's thinking and feeling about his this is what he expects really to happen so he's anticipating um to essentially never really have his freedom 
uh, and this is linked to his health his you know he he worries that he's going to be assassinated essentially um and this it's kind of a sign of a potential sort of you know defeat there's a feeling of defeat here um what I do find particularly interesting, and I can't quite work it out or make it out, and it looks like a triangle here on the lifeline. And there's a little line that kind of comes down here and it meets this, it, it looks as though to meet this escape line. And actually what I think this is, is it looks to me like, I'm going to say about the age of 30, there's a period of a few years after the age of 30 where things really uh, pick up in this person's career reputation. It kind of explodes for this person. And it's triangles are always prosperous. They're always productive and fortunate. And there's always an element of study around them as well. It's interesting to note that the triangle itself points towards Mercury. And this is this Mercury amount is showing how this person is being sort of revealed to the world. Um, everything is exposed when things are brought out into the open and, and revealed up onto Mercury. And this is, this is hinting at that. This is his feeling now. But before that happens, rather than this having an effect positively, it kind of reaches down. So it's showing how potentially there's a good thing here. There's um study there's something that's quite productive in terms of uh, study and how this person can communicate his his message um but it all kind of goes south and it's connected to this this feeling a need uh, uh, of to escape and it all stems from that age of around about 30 and we can't really get a clear picture where well, we just can't on on the on the right hand so we're really all we've got is his thoughts and feelings about about it all um so i'm not really going to try and, and predict here this person's uh, the potential um head in terms of what might happen to this person sort of physically now if you look really closely you can see a little dark spot there on this very pixelated image and obviously I've been showing you this picture where if you look very closely you can also just about see a dark dot there as well this is a mole it's low down on Luna now actually of everything this might well be the most prominent and interesting marking all together Remember that it's on the left hand and not the right. But in Indian palmistry, this is known as harsha yog. And it's said to provide a person with virtue, fortune, intelligence, and a firm character, a firm nature. And these are all things I've mentioned anyway. But what it also is said to provide is fame. So that's really something and i i feel that this is if being in the left hand this is showing it some sort of innate sense of almost predetermined this this i don't know if this was if this sort of desire this this uh ambition for reputation and glory has has um you know, created this spot here, or maybe it was always there. So it's hard to know in palmistry if if the effects of who we are internally create um, externally on our palms, or if in some way the planet seems to align and and somehow the information is is presented there because of fate. You know, there are two those two kind of main schools of thought i suppose well there is that other one that's um essentially it's all just nonsense and it's all external and these are flexor crease lines but that doesn't explain intricate palmer markings like stars that come and go within a couple of days 
But there we go, I'll stop now. I want to know what your thoughts are on my palm reading for Julian Assange. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't have been more as accurate as I wanted to be. Um, you know, I can only provide clarity with clarity, and unfortunately I don't really have that in these images, and these are the best ones I could find. I will end with this marriage line here, though, and this is certainly someone he, he cares about very strongly. And the way we see it rising upwards like this, this shows someone who's quite idealistic in terms of their relationship values and is not um, generally inclined towards uh, the traditional sort of marriage. This is someone who's quite happy to live with and be with faithfully uh, someone their whole life, but marriage itself is not something that they are all that into. They are um, traditional in, in their, their own quite unique individualistic idealistic ways so let me know what your thoughts are i'm curious to know um, and thank you for watching please subscribe